And now a story that is going to force you to choose sides. A respected prosecutor, a pillar of his community, who says as a teenager he was caught in a youthful indiscretion. His accuser, a woman who describes a shocking episode that she says happened when they were both in high school. Only one of them is telling the whole truth. But which one? And why are they reliving it today, 35 years later? Here's Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace. The kids at Great Mills High School look like most teenagers in 1964. But behind the all-American scenes, the football games and dances, students here shared a dark secret. One of them may have been gang raped. I just remember screaming for help, and th th that's all. And did help ever come? No. Did Carla consent to having sex with you? Yes. Nothing forced about it? Nothing whatsoever. Rick Fritz and Carla Bailey, who were schoolmates back then, now give very different accounts of that explosive incident. Whatever happened between them as teenagers 35 years ago, it's suddenly front page news in this corner of Southern Maryland. Do you think you're objective? Do you think you're even-handed? Probably not. Publisher Ken Rosignol ran the rape headline on election day, just as Fritz was running to be the top prosecutor in the county. This is the story of how far an aggressive reporter went to dig into a candidate's past and the extraordinary step the candidate took to fight back. It was cold. It was calculated. It was intended to make me lose an election. How did it come to this, a prominent 53-year-old lawyer having to answer for what he may have done when he was 18? To understand how it all happened, First, you need to understand where it took place. Some 50 miles outside Washington, St. Mary's County may seem a world apart from the nation's capital, but its small town southern flavor can mislead you. Because we found this community is rife with blood feuds and political power struggles that rival anything you'll find in the big city. Here among the tobacco farms and cotton, alongside the pristine stretches of waterfront, They've been playing an especially rough brand of hardball politics for generations. But if you do have any more information on Trooper Moriarty's uh, arrest... On One of the key players is Ken Rosignol, who puts out a weekly tabloid called St. Mary's Today. There were six witnesses. He is the reporter and photographer and editor-in-chief at the paper. St. Mary's Today. Sometimes his 80-year-old mother, Ellen, helps out with the phones. But Rosignol is essentially a one-man band. Any evidence of alcohol? Long before he targeted Rick Fritz, Rosignol was drawing blood in St. Mary's County. How, how long before you all are through with this? Each week, he prints the names of local residents arrested for drunk driving. A county commissioner who falls asleep in a meeting earns a mention on the front page. Some might call me a crusader. Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm doing my job. You know what some people call your paper, don't you? Oh, sure. They call it the rag. It probably means they don't like it. And you know what? Uh, them that don't like it shouldn't. In the fall of 98, Rick Fritz was running to become state's attorney. And from the start of the campaign, Fritz says, the paper had a fatal attraction obsession with him. One story alleged when he was a deputy prosecutor, Fritz was soft on drug dealers. Another accused him of delaying a trial so he could go bear hunting. He's made me look like a liar to the court. He's made me look like a thief. He's made me appear as though I'm giving inside information to drug dealers. Obviously, what they were endeavoring to do was to blow me up, dynamite me. You printed story after story about Rick Fritz. You really went after him, didn't you? Uh, I think we went after his record. We're going to look at the record, and we're going to tell our readers what, we, what the record shows. And we're going to tell them what we think about it, too. Were you trying to beat him to make sure he didn't win? Absolutely. The important issue for the citizens of this county... In the final days of the campaign, it became an issue that both candidates for state's attorney had been in trouble with the law when they were much younger. And this was Rosignol's silver bullet. Looking through court records, he found that back in high school, Rick Fritz was charged with carnal knowledge of a female child, 
that he and two other young men had sex with a 15-year-old. Fritz pled guilty to the misdemeanor and got off with probation. On election eve, the most explosive story of the campaign rolled off the presses. The headline was a bombshell. Fritz, guilty of rape. Do you think it's fair to print an article like that on election day when the candidate is going to have no opportunity to respond? Sure, that's fair. He's a big boy. But timing wasn't the only issue. Was that front page headline an accurate description of the crime? Wouldn't it have been more accurate to say he pled guilty to sex with an underage girl? A lot more accurate than saying he pled guilty to rape. Oh, that's a good headline. I wish you were here at the time. <laughs> you make it sound like, well, it wouldn't have sold as many papers. No, you said that. I didn't say that. You don't have any qualms about putting pled guilty to rape on the front page no, of your paper? None whatsoever. Before the sun came up election morning, Fritz and some of his supporters decided to strike back to make sure that voters never got a chance to see that front page. You had people at this point in time that in essence said, damn it, enough is enough. Campaign workers, including several off-duty sheriff's deputies, fanned out across the county to buy every St. Mary's today they could find. At 5 a.m., they purchased all 70 papers at this grocery. An hour later, the 50 copies at this gas station were gone. And all night, they cleaned out every vending machine. By election morning, anyone who wanted to read Rosignol's paper was out of luck. You know, it's not my First Amendment right. They violated my reader's First Amendment right. Rosignol was outraged, calling it a direct violation of freedom of the press. When law enforcement officers want to step across the line and violate people's constitutional rights because they feel that's the only way they can win an election, the closest thing that you can find to that is what has happened in Nazi Germany and in other third world totalitarian countries. He put them on the market for purchase and they were purchased. Wait, Mr. Fritz, wait a minute, wait. Do you think that when, they, when a publisher puts out several thousand copies of his paper, don't you think he expects them to actually get to the readers? Not to just oh, all be bought I'm, up I'm by, sure, a, by a politician sure he, and thrown away? I'm, I'm sure he did, but most publishers are not attempting to subvert democracy as he was. He has a right to choose his method of distribution and you have a right to interfere. Not to interfere, to purchase. Some people called what the Fritz Camp did on election day the newspaper caper, but it's turned out to be no joke. Rosignol complained to authorities that the deputies intimidated store clerks into selling them the papers. Now the FBI is reportedly investigating whether the off-duty officers committed civil rights violations. Do you think that you or the off-duty sheriff's deputies did anything wrong? No, absolutely not. On election night, with the details of the rape allegation still a secret to most voters, Fritz won with 54% of the vote. It was a victory not only over his opponent in the campaign, but also over Rosignol's newspaper. But it didn't last long, because one more key player was about to be heard from. After 35 years, this woman was finally ready to break her silence. Richard Fritz, the man who's now the state's attorney, he was the second man who raped you. 